Thank you, Glenda. Good morning. I'm excited to welcome you this first Sunday in Advent to the United Methodist Church of Hampton. Welcome to those of us that will join us online with Facebook or those of us who are joining us on the radio. For God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Please stand, if you're able, and join me in the opening prayer, the Lord's Prayer, and our first hymn. Heavenly Father, we rejoice rejoice that that we can can come come into your your house house today and and worship worship you with those who love you. Thank you for inspiring and leading your people to establish your house here in this place. We pray that all who worship here might experience your love, grace, mercy, and forgiveness. We pray for your people all the world over, and we pray that they might prosper along with us as we serve you and others. May everyone who trusts in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior find and experience peace with God, others, and themselves. Through your only begotten Son, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our first hymn is Trust and Obey. 467 in your hymnal. to trust 
seated. I invite Kate, Tan, and Jack Hinden to come forward as they get us started with our Advent candle. I was glad when they said to me, let us go home to the house of the Lord. We are glad whether we drove in or climbed up, whether we logged on or tuned in. We are glad to be here in this community with this family. It is a piece of joyful hope of radical welcome. It is a place where together we can wait in wondrous anticipation of the kingdom to come. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us God's ways, and that we may walk in God's paths. We light this candle as a sign of our hope, our joyous hope, that we can be restored, our faith restored, our strength restored, our confidence restored, our joy restored, as we watch and wait with all of God's people to be, for the promise to be fulfilled. Let's join together in our next hymn, number 731, Glorious Things of These Are Spoken. Oh 
Our Old Testament reading this morning is from Isaiah 2, 1 through 4. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Please stand for the gospel reading. The gospel reading this morning is Matthew 24, 36 through 44. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were so, so will it be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too it will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken, and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you must also be ready for the Son of Man is coming in an unexpected hour. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. Amen, and thank you for that wonderful reading of scriptures and the beautiful chorus that sang this morning. O come, O come, Emmanuel. This is the first Sunday of Advent. We have lit the candle of hope. We are anticipating Christmas. It seems like after, you know, 2,000 plus years, uh, the first time was a surprise, and now we don't quite seem as surprised as we tell the story over and over and over again. But yet... Uh, Advent seems to have two purposes. One purpose is that we remember, and the second purpose is that we anticipate the second coming, where Jesus will come again. Um, That kind of takes us back to that Old Testament lesson from Isaiah chapter 2, and and I I really thank uh, our technical people that we we see the scriptures on the screen. Uh, when we read them, because Isaiah, uh, he opens it up, uh, the, the prologue, that, that introductory verse, the word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw. He saw the word. And there's, there's something amazing when we see the word. Uh, one of our gospel writers tells us that the word is Jesus. And, you know, since Jesus rose from the dead, we understand that the Word is alive. And so when we read or when we see the Word printed in our bulletins or on screen, we take joy in knowing that it still speaks to us, that it still has meaning. In this season of hope, we have so many hopes, we have so many dreams, we have so many wishes that sometimes those dreams and hopes and wishes, well, we kind of get carried away. 
you know, we have hopes that this will happen or maybe that we'll get a certain thing for Christmas. No, 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 Christmas is still coming. We're anticipating that. But like Thanksgiving was last week, I hope you all had a, a wonderful Thanksgiving and that you are still carrying that Thanksgiving spirit that we give thanks for all the gifts that God has given us like hope and faith and joy and love that we truly are blessed with this hope that God has placed in our hearts the word of promise even like uh, the Old Testament prophets gave uh, the people of old times hope in a coming Messiah a coming a Messiah he's coming He's coming. I remember a story of a preacher that as he was saying that he's coming, he accidentally tripped and fell and, and landed in a lady's lap. And, and he got up and apologized and says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And, and she says, well, you said you were coming three times. I should have been ready. Well, that is the hope that we have. Our gospel writer Matthew says, stay awake. Be ready. He is coming. But that's Matthew. If we go back to Isaiah, um, they waited, and they waited, and they waited. And you know, your idea of what's coming kind of changes the longer you wait. The words of the prophet he shall come and he shall free his people was the word of prophecy but their idea of a king their idea of salvation was a nationalistic idea it was great power we can lord it over all the other nations we can pay them back for all the bad things that they've done to us. We can have our vengeance. And the prophets tried. They says, oh, but he will be a king of kings and prince of peace. Of peace. And, and Isaiah, oh, he's trying in the days to come, which is not today or tomorrow or even next week, but in the days to come. That's a linguistic Bible term that means the end times. When the Messiah comes again at the end of the world, after you've lived your lives in faithfulness and obedience and you've learned to be at peace with each other, How's that working? So again, you can see that Isaiah is speaking for a time yet to come because we're not all that good at peace when left to our own devices and our own kings and governments. But Isaiah gives them hope. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established. And all nations shall stream to it, and many people shall come and say, Come on, everybody, let's get up, and let's go to the house of the Lord, the house of the God of Jacob, the chosen people who were chosen to be witnesses to God. They were chosen to provide peace and love, who were chosen to be and give testimony. For how great and loving God is. Let's go there and worship their God. And let us be taught by him that we might walk in his paths. From God's holy temple shall come instruction. And we will hear the word of the Lord. And he shall judge between nations, he shall arbitrate, declare peace among the people. 
and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, and they shall not lift up swords against one another. They shall not learn war anymore. Well, I didn't get up this morning with the anticipation of going out in my front yard and picking up the newspaper. I woke up this morning with anticipation that I would come to church to worship and to join in fellow believers that have hope and peace and joy and love and to make connection with friends and family and strangers all over our radio community and web community and to express to them the blessings of our Advent season and how important it is to anticipate that Christ has come and Christ will come again. But it's one thing to sing Christmas songs as if that was a day in the past without hearing some of the embedded words in that Christmas message to just dwell on the fact that, oh yeah, we know he's coming, we just don't know when. As if, if we keep awake and we just watch the sky in anticipation. And we forget that New Testament scripture where the angels appeared and says, why are you standing there staring up in the sky? Yes, he'll come again in the same way that he went. But until then, you've got work to do. Get off the mountaintop and go down into the valleys and preach peace. Preach love, preach joy, preach hope. Because that's what the people need to hear. The people need to hear that there is a God that loves them. A God that loves them. We're going to be blessed here in a week with musical numbers and choirs singing and organs blaring no <laughs> one of those words <laughs> softly as he caresses the keys and we hear wonderful music and I think that sometime in this Christmas season we might even hear maybe a selection from is it George Frederick Handel who wrote the Messiah? Who wrote the Messiah? But to tell you part of that story of, of Handel's life, he lived in a time when, you know, there were governments and there was a king. And, you know, he had to be careful because you don't say anything that might offend the king. And it was a time where, you know, it seemed like, oh, Sometimes it's a Protestant king, and sometimes it's a Catholic king. Sometimes it's a good king. Sometimes it's a bad king. And, you know, Handel was friends with the king. And everybody was so surprised that they were friends. And one day somebody said something to the king, because uh, the king seemed excited. He seemed as if he was anticipating a visit from his friend. And they asked him, well, what are you anticipating? Oh, oh, <laughs> I'm anticipating that uh, Handel, that, that God-loving, God-fearing guy is going to come in once again and tell me what my sins are. He's going to tell me what my sins are. And they're like, Really? Yeah, because he's good and I'm not so good. I, I try. Well, sometimes I don't even try. But he'll let me know. But he'll let me know in love. In love. Because that's 
the kind of God that he has. And yet, in love, in one of the choruses in his music, the Messiah, and the glory, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. That awesome chorus. But hidden in one of the verses, in like the seventh, seventh line, there's a line from Scripture. A line from Scripture that talks about who the Messiah is. And he shall purify the sons of men. He will cleanse their lives and their hearts. He will call them to repentance. And then, and only then, will God be with them. In our gospel lesson for Matthew, where the disciples gathered around him and they want to say, when will this be? And he said, no one knows the time or the hour, not even the Son of God, the Son of Man, his, his preferred phrasing of that, the human one, knows the time or the place or the date. But be ready. Be ready. Like in the days of Noah, like a thief in the night, different phrases, different terminologies, that which comes suddenly without announcement. But yet, Handel gave us an announcement, yet Noah gave an announcement. Matthew gives an, an announcement. It says, stay awake. Be ready. I can imagine how it was for Noah after preaching 400 years to the community, to the neighbors, and yet, no one really responded. No one confessed their sins. No one shared their faith. No one said, yeah, we've got to change our lives. And one morning, as Noah's wife was trying to wake him up and said, come on, hon, it's time to start another day. And she looks out the window and, he, and says, Noah, is that rain out there and he gets up out of bed and looks out the window yep looks like rain come on we've got a lot of work to do a lot of work to do to gather the animals to gather the family to preach people it's raining. Didn't I tell you? Didn't I try to get you to have anticipation? To turn to the Lord, to ask forgiveness for your sins, to join with us in the righteousness of God, and to receive his salvation. It's raining. And no one came. Noah and his family herded the animals into the ark. And then they got in the ark and they stood in the doorway. And Moses' wife looked at him and says, you know, that door looks pretty heavy. And I brought the broom from home and They've made a mess getting in here, but now that it's raining, uh, this dust and, and it's turning to mud, and I'm going to have to clean this, and, and it's raining out. It's raining out. It's raining out. Moses closed the door. 
And Moses says, I built that door pretty strong and pretty heavy. And I don't think even all together we can close the door. But God will. For Moses, that was the day that the door closed. Matthew is telling us that it's going to be like that when God closes the door. Those are with him, abiding in him, trusting in him, finding peace and joy and hope and love in him. They will be saved. The song we sang, glorious things of thee are spoken. Our gospel lesson said, stay awake for the thief in the night. The thief in the night. We lock our doors because we have valuables. We're afraid of the thief in the night. But God's not going to come as a thief because everything that we have, we know that we have as part of a gift, as part of a trust, we have given even of ourselves to God. And so we don't fear him as a thief in the night. We pray to him, Lord, search our hearts. See if there is any wicked way in me. Try me and know my thoughts. And Lord, give me hope, peace, joy and love and lead me in the way everlasting and all God's children said amen amen king of kings lord of lords prince of peace the gospel writers called him Jesus 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 there's Something about that name. Please stand if you are able and turn to 715 in your hymnal. This is a change in number from your bulletin. 171. That one will come after the benediction. We're good. 171. I beg your pardon, they changed it back. In the name of Jesus, 
your sins are forgiven. Go forth and walk the path of the Lord. Go forth and live as one instructed in the ways of the Lord. Take your weapons of your life and turn them into instruments of peace and justice. Praise be to our God who shows us the way. In Jesus Christ, amen. Our final hymn today is uh, actually number 715 in the hymnal, Rejoice, the Lord is King. Amen. 